Well, the biggest aid agency of the United Nations working in Gaza for many decades is the United Nations Relief and Works Organization, UNRWA, and we're joined now by its Commissioner General, Philippe Lazzarini. Welcome to BBC News, uh, Philippe Lazzarini. Thank you for having me, Liz. You have watched closely, day in, day out, what has happened inside Gaza in the humanitarian situation. How would you describe it now? I think, Liz, we, we are becoming wordless. We soon have exhausted all our vocabulary to try to describe what has become a Westland, what has become uh, an unlivable uh, area. Uh, this war has been uh, the war of all the superlative. Look at the number of uh, civilian and people who have been uh, killed, the number of uh, uh, humanitarian workers, UNRWA workers, the level of uh, destruction, the number of times people have been uh, moved around like uh, pinballs. And basically, um, there is a kind of a post apocalyptic uh, atmosphere prevailing right now in uh, Gaza where people are just uh, in pilot automatic mode trying to uh, confronting uh, uh, death, confronting disease, confronting uh, hunger, a uh, hunger which, uh, by the way, has also been man-made in the Gaza Strip. Explain to us just how dire the food situation is. Your UN figures say that 97 percent of Gazans are facing uh, food crisis levels of food insecurity. There had been concern of famine-like conditions, if not even famine itself, in northern Gaza. Have you been able to get enough food to prevent that specter of famine? Well, the short answer is we haven't been uh, able. The entire population of Gaza, in fact, is dependent on humanitarian assistance. It is true that a few months ago we were very close to a famine situation. There have been a number of alarms. We have been able at that time to increase, uh, in fact, the number of uh, trucks uh, entering into Gaza. But I would say since a few months ago, the number has significantly decreased. Uh, we have uh, no food re uh, relief item entering into the north uh, anymore. And the one in the south of uh, Gaza, uh, I would say a quarter of the level of what we used to do at the peak time a few months ago. You are facing unprecedented conditions on the ground, but also unprecedented challenges to the survival of your own organization. Prime Minister Netanyahu has made it clear, and you've recognized this, that he would like to shut down UNRWA. He sees it, to use his expression, as riddled by uh, members of Hamas. How big is that threat now? Do you get enough support from other partners to keep going? But uh, first, uh, Liz, we, we, we have been totally disregarded in, uh, in the Gaza Strip. Uh, if you look at uh, the number of uh, humanitarian workers killed, uh, our premises destroyed 70 percent of them. Some of them were sheltering uh, people seeking United Nations protection and have been killed. And uh, there is no week without our convoys uh, being attacked. In addition of that, uh, there is indeed this uh, political aim to dismantle the agency. Uh, the risk and the threat is very high. There are discussions going on uh, at the Knesset uh, aiming at uh, uh, expulsing uh, the agency, dismounting it, uh, lifting the privilege uh, and immunities, and even labeling the agency as a terrorist uh, organization, which would be quite unprecedented from a UN member state to label a UN agency mandated by the international community, being the UN General Assembly, as a terrorist organization. So there will be, if this is implemented, operational implication such as who will provide education to the 600,000 girls and boys deeply traumatized living in the rubble in Gaza. There is an urgency to bring them back in an education environment. And only UNRWA can do it in the absence of a functioning state or administration. But do you feel you're getting support at the highest levels of the United Nations and in other capitals around the world, including in Britain, to ensure that your organization survives? 
The Secretary General has been very active. He has uh, written a letter to Prime Minister Netanyahu a few days ago, highlighting, in fact, the impact of such a decision. Would the decision be implemented? It's not just operational, but it's also legal. It would be in total contradiction with the UN Charter, but also in a contradiction with the UN General Mandate, as well as the uh, latest uh, ICG decision, which has made the occupation illegal. But it would also have political consequences, because if we accept this to happen in the context of Palestine Israel, this will open a Pandora box for this to be implemented anywhere else, and it would be a weakening of our common instrument of the, of the multilateral uh, system. Now, we are mobilizing member states. Uh, we are receiving support. Is it enough? Not yet, uh, but we will continue to galvanize uh, our member states. Philippe Lazzarini, Commissioner General of Winner, thank you very much uh, for joining us uh, to outline the stark challenges facing the organization itself, but also facing the challenges of getting even basic food to the people of Gaza.